Welcome to Burrowbridge. Behind me, you can see, well, you can't see, but the A1M motorway. And we've just pulled off the road and there are some beautiful fields of wheat, which Theresa May would love. And just behind me there, these giant stone megaliths. Incredible. This is the second tallest stone megalith in the United Kingdom. These are called the Devil's Arrows, and we are going to explore them. And there it is. So this is the second tallest megalith in this country. This is absolutely enormous. It's staggering, the scale of it. And what I find even more staggering is that this isn't preserved. This, there are, there's no visitor centre here. There's no, there's no path. There is still a farm around this. Someone farms around this. This is a magnificently enormous piece of stone. I dread to think how much it weighs, but it's tons. How did people move this? From what we know of the carbon data around this site, we're talking about late Neolithic, early Bronze Age. Okay. So I suspect, again from a geological perspective, that these channels are weathered channels of, of runoff water. There doesn't seem to be any, any other great big striations, but there are lots of marks in the rock. It's, we can't say for sure when those marks were made. A lot of them, I would imagine, have been made in more recent history. This clearly would be something that people would know about long after it was put here, long after it was used for its original purpose. And like the name Devil's Arrow implies, this is something that has had uh, a long life, a mythology attached to it, which has taken on many, many different meanings over the years. But if we are gonna continue to think about cup and ring marks, then we do find evidence of rings, cups, evidence of fire. You would expect that to be much more recent. But what about some of these holes further up? What does it tell us? What was this used for? My colleague, Mr. Natras, has suggested that Maybe certain monuments like this might have been used to as, as kind of posts to create greater structures or tents or to hold canvas sheets to create a kind of a covering. I mean, what's, we don't immediately need to jump to the fact that this could be a, a spiritual or, or a religious site. This could be a, a, a beacon of trade. People could have came here from far and wide. And so, if we want to try and try and come up with some ideas about what this was for, then sure, that's maybe one great example. A beacon for trade, to bring people here. Maybe the holes represent points at which covering could have been attached. Maybe this was a great market. It would be it would be useful Certainly if we could see a lot more of what was under the ground and some of the remains that have been left. Examples of pottery. That's something that we need to, we need to look at a lot, a lot more. But again, an incredible sight. No markings. No one else is here. Not widely visited, from what I could tell. Incredible. I just find it absolutely astonishing that more isn't being made of this and more isn't being discovered underneath the ground here and, and what, what it tells us about how people used to live, what they used to do, why they used to do it. And so there we go, there's the first arrow of the Devil's Arrows, which is at Borough Bridge in North Yorkshire. And so I'm gonna move on, take a look at the next one, and we'll go from there. If, if the other monument was for trade. It was a way of attaching some kind of canvas sheets or some kind of tent structure. 
or, or a wooden structure. Why couldn't there have been a wooden structure around it, which has now obviously since rotted away? Then this could have been the same, although the, the rock is different. The rock isn't as tall, the rock is wider. Surely that would have been easier to use to use rock uh, wood to do that and then if you're going to do that it takes away the, the fact of it being a beacon that attracts people from far around as well as that we are on quite a flat area of land people maybe wouldn't be wouldn't be able to see these from too far away so it, it's very difficult to say why these would have been used for what purpose very difficult but that is the joy that's the joy of history, that's the joy of what we're doing now. This is a mystery. There are some things that humans still don't know. We like to think that we've we've reached the, the peak of our development, that we know everything. Certainly in science, modern, modern humans like to think that. But that's just not the case. There is so much we just don't know. So they're almost in a straight line, but not quite. Which again, begs the question, well, why were they put there? Because if they're not in a straight alignment, but they're not, they're quite, they're actually slightly off each other. Maybe they weren't as, as precise as what we would like to believe. And maybe that was the close that they could get. Or maybe, just to put it out there, this links to like a, what people talk about when they look at the alignment of the pyramids at Giza. Again, it's not a straight line, it's slightly offset. 